afternoon, I am Chancellor Robert Jones, and it is my singular privilege to welcome students, faculty, staff, and very honored guests to the groundbreaking for the Siebel Center for Design at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. I think we all would agree that this is a tremendously important and exciting day for this university as well as a historic one. As my colleague Provost Kangalaris has said, the Siebel Center for Design is a striking new addition to both the physical and academic landscape of our university. This is going to be a central foundation in an educational transformation that will change the world's idea about what a university education will be in the 21st century. That kind of bold thinking and audacious statement should come as no surprise to anyone who is familiar with the history and accomplishments of the university and our alumni. When you're talking about an initiative like this that carries Tom Siebel's name, instead of calling this a groundbreaking, it's probably a lot more accurate to refer to it as ground shaking. <laughs> Tom is a visionary leader and innovator who has made a career in demonstrating the transformational power of multidisciplinary approaches and our non-traditional thinking to creating solutions uh, no one ever imagined possible. You can see that in his academic path through Illinois, Tom has earned degrees in history and business and computer science. He wasn't building a resume for the job that already existed. He was instead assembling the experiences and the knowledge he needed to create an industry that he envisioned as the future. His ideas and innovations have, without exaggeration, played a significant role in shaping today's global information service and technology economy. The Siebel Center for Design is gone to make the path that Tom blazed much easier for and more accessible for future generations of our students. It will let them assemble their own skills and academic experiences in ways that allows them to be more than just involved in getting a degree. He is empowering them to design their own futures. More than that, I believe he's, he's empowering them to design our future. This is the newest addition to the Siebel legacy at Illinois. And just like all of his gifts to Illinois, this one pushes us to be a university that doesn't just imagine the world to come but is actively engaged in building the world as it should be. So Tom, on behalf of the entire university community, thank you once again for demonstrating your confidence in the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign with the Siebel Center for Design. As you all know, this isn't just a big event for our university. It is an important new resource for our entire state. It will attract even more talented Illinois residents to this flagship university. And when students come here for school, they tend to stay in Illinois to begin their careers. More than 70% of our 2018 graduating class found their first jobs here in the state of Illinois. And I want to repeat that so because sometimes it gets misinterpreted. More than 70% of our graduates find their first jobs here in the state of Illinois, and we're very proud of that. We're excited to welcome Deputy Governor Leslie Munger back to campus to help us celebrate today. She's here representing Governor Rauner, but she is also an Illinois graduate. So she understands what it means when we talk about Illinois, the Illinois experiences. So please join me in welcoming Deputy Governor Leslie Munger. Governor.
Thank you, Chancellor Jones, for that kind introduction. Uh, I am not only an alum, uh, I am the wife of an Illinois graduate, and I have two sons who are University of Illinois graduates. So it is truly an honor for me to be here today uh, to celebrate this groundbreaking for the Siebel Center of Design. The state of Illinois is home to many, many innovations, uh, everything from the Ferris wheel and the zipper to the cell phone. And many of our innovations have come from University of Illinois alumni that have led the way, founding, find, founding companies from, uh, that really have changed not only our lives but the way we work, really have touched every single thing we do. Companies like Oracle, Netscape, YouTube, Tesla Motors, Flexingate, PayPal, and of course, Siebel Systems. As Deputy Governor, I've had the pleasure of working closely with leaders here at University of Illinois on plans for a new Discovery Partners Institute, an initiative that will serve as a catalyst for technology development and job creation throughout the entire state and in fact, beyond our state. So it's very exciting for me to be here today because this new Siebel Center for Design is yet another great example of vision in action. It will ensure that we continue U of I's leadership legacy well into the future. This will be a hub for innovation with cross-disciplinary, hands-on study and design and dedicated to collaboration and idea sharing. We will equip U of I students with world-class skills that go beyond the classroom and into the workplace, preparing them for the future and for leadership roles in their companies and in our state. So on behalf of Governor Rauner and the entire state of Illinois, we are very, very grateful for your efforts. Thank you for your investment in our future leaders and, um, and workforce in our state. Thank you for your continued leadership. And thank you for having me here today. I'm very grateful to be part of this grand opening event and for commemorating such a wonderful day for the University of Illinois. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Governor Munger, for your remarks. And as you know, it's always a pleasure to welcome you and your entire family back home to Urbana-Champaign campus. Thank you so much. Now it is my privilege to introduce someone who truly understands the critical role that the Siebel Center for Design will play not only in the future of this campus, this university, but a role that it will play in the entire University of Illinois system and the state of Illinois, if not the nation. And that is the University of Illinois president of the University of Illinois system, Tim Colleen, a person who is champion redefining the role of this high class, world class system of education and defining the economic vitality of the state and the nation. President Clean, we're deeply honored and pleased to have you with us today. How could I stay away, Robert? Um, on behalf of the whole university system, it's my pleasure uh, to welcome all of you here. Students, alumni, faculty, staff, friends, donors, Deputy Governor Munger, thank you for your loyalty to the university. Uh, our congressional staff members, uh, Randy Sikorsky from Senator Tammy Duckworth's office, uh, Linda Yoakum from Rodney Davis, uh, representative, and Reno Jameson from Representative John Shimpus are in the audience, and thank you for coming here. But I'm thrilled myself to be here to help break ground for this new hub of next generation talent and innovation, and a profoundly thank Tom and Stacy Siebel for lifting us towards this amazing vision of our future. Another round of applause. <laughs> Few people could do it, could, uh, and I just want to thank personally for the leadership, the vision, the challenging, the, the sense, the embracing, the competitiveness, and, and the demand for excellence that, that this uh, that this all represents. This is going to be hallowed ground just like the moral plots are hallowed ground from us. We do have ambitious plans. We are, uh, we are aspirational in outlook and this is going to personify that. 
Uh, and we do have a roadmap, we do have a plan for the future adopted almost two years ago to take our university system to the next level of service and excellence, both with true excellence in every fiber, but also the scale that can make a difference to society in general, particularly here in the Midwest, but around the world. That plan is strategic and specific. It touches on innovation, which is represented here. And we do have the steps in place to climb to reach our goal of becoming not just one of the world's best university systems, but the world's best, the model, the true model for higher education in the 21st century. And whenever I meet Tom, uh, my competitive juices start to flow as well, and, and he represents that uh, in spades. So this remarkable facility is gonna check a lot of boxes for us. It's gonna help us reimagine student learning, student-focused education, and will expand opportunities broadly for hands-on learning that provides the kind of real-world skills that are gonna be needed to transform society in, in the future. We will be developing new knowledge here that today we can't even imagine or dream about. This facility will build a system-wide culture of innovation, which is remarkable already, but it's gonna be rooted here, of collaboration, of entrepreneurship, and thoughtful risk-taking that will help drive and propel discovery and progress as needed into the future. And it will really build on the world-class experience of generation after generation of students. It'll cultivate our most valuable assets, the human and intellectual capital that fuel our power as an engine for a global and regional economic growth. We're already a go-to destination for the best and brightest students. And as you know, we're setting an enrollment record for the fifth straight year last year, and we're on path to set one for the sixth straight year in, in the year that comes. So not only are we gonna do this uh, intensively with purpose and elan, but we're gonna do it at a scale that's unprecedented for this university. We're home to top faculty, many colleagues in the audience, including professors that have helped us earn, put 40 of our programs in the very top tier uh, in, uh, among the nation's best. And we're on a recruitment drive to bring more uh, colleagues here. And we already wrote, uh, uh, boast a rich legacy of discovery that helped carve out this university in Reuters' latest rankings as one of the top 25 universities in the world for discovery and innovation. This will only help uh, uh, drive that uh, recognition. The Siebel Center for Design will raise our global standing and our impact to new levels, and we cannot overstate the recognition and the, and the gratitude, deep gratitude that we have for Tom and his leadership. He's challenging us here. He and Stacy are challenging us here to not just take it to the next level, but to take it to a order of magnitude next level. And, uh, and I want to acknowledge the Easters in the audience here, my predecessors as well, because I think this is very consistent with our overall decadal vision of how this university needs to grow and prosper. So uh, my, my final pleasure is to introduce Andreas Kangelaris, our new uh, provost, your new provost, and uh, who took office uh, earlier this year. It's been a few uh, interesting months, Andreas. Uh, after, but after two decades, as dean, a department head, and a professor, and a very distinguished uh, researcher in his own his own right, he was under the uh, he was one of the initial collaborators who laid the groundwork and the design for this new state of the art facility. And I had the chance to personally congratulate him a moment ago too for 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 bringing this vision to fruition. So please join me in welcoming Andreas. Thank you, thank you, President Kilin. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. What a day. What a day. I have many things that I have me asking to, to talk to you about, but I don't think we need words to describe how each and every one of us feels today. So let me try to put it in my own words here. I want to start with something that I know every one of us recognizes. Who are the people that inspire us? It's our students. They're the ones who inspire us. They're the ones who challenge us. And in this specific case, one of those students is Mr. Tom Zibo. He was the one who inspired this idea of putting together for the University of Illinois a challenge, as President Killeen so correctly identified that, 
to rethink the way we educate the citizens of the 21st century? How do we rethink their approach to becoming successful in what they want to pursue, but at the same time respectful and responsible for the things they need to look after? And Tom did it in such an amazing way. He reflected on his success. A student here on this campus, starting with history and allowing the rest of the campus as it was going about its business innovating to inspire in him all the other things that he would like to do. Business, computer science. How often you hear someone who comes from the history side go and get a master's degree in computer science. I know we're talking about CS plus X now and we're very proud of it. But imagine what we are talking about here. A history major going after a computer science degree and master's degree. And obviously, you look at this campus, we have all those elements that can make these things possible. And Tom said, well, let's make sure that we make this possible for every student who wants to take advantage of this amazing campus in Urbana-Champaign. And the rest, you might say, is history. Once you articulate that vision, it is our responsibility to make it happen. But of course, a vision like this is, reminds us of the things we have been able to do over the years. We claim we are a, an exemplar for interdisciplinary research. How do we go about demonstrating that and expanding on that? We'll be, we build the Beckman Institute. How many people recognize the Beckman Institute as the beacon of what the University of Illinois is famous for, interdisciplinary research? And how do we take that culture and we turn it into a culture of interdisciplinary education? The Siebel Center for Design. Tom, thank you very much for challenging us to make this new facility happen in a way that transforms the experience of every student on this campus and I'm sure on every other campus in the world. Because when the University of Illinois makes something happen, the world follows. Thank you very much. But when you make such a thing happen, you, you need to make sure that it also projects itself in a way that is inviting if you wish, as inviting as the Greek Agora, where everything, everything is fair game. Because after all, I will tell you that that's what we want this place to be, a place that embraces people and also soothes people with its beauty. Think of where we are. We are in the prairie. And is there anything more beautiful in the world than the, sun the sunset of the prairie? And these were the things that were in people's minds when we were thinking about it, and we are lucky to have Peter Bolling, one of the most amazing architects of his generation, together with his team, take that inspiration for this amazing, unique facility happen. Peter, thank you so much for being part of this amazing design. And I will tell you, we're a difficult group to work with. When it comes to satisfying the University of Illinois community, it takes patience, it takes persistence, but most important, it takes immersion in the things that drive us. And I will tell you, we had an amazing core team that came together, members of this campus in their own way to inspire one another, and through that, to engage Peter and his team in what we call now the design of the Sybil Center for Design. David Waitman, Andy Singer, where are you, Andy? Right there. Noah Iserman, and Matthew Tomaszewski, that I know he's somewhere here, but here he is. They spent hours and hours working with Peter's team, arguing back and forth, but inspiring them to do one thing, to embrace the fact that this is a facility that, in the words of John Steinbeck, is supposed to let the human mind free to pursue whatever it is that the human mind pursues. And that is what came out of this effort, an amazing facility 
You see it, you will see it over and again, you will see the real life when it happens. But I want to tell you, these are the kinds of things that attract people's attention. Why do we remember the golden years of Athens? It's because of the Acropolis. Yes, there were all these philosophers and all these other people. If I ask you to pronounce their names, you will have a hard time doing so. But when you say Acropolis, everybody knows what you're talking about, the golden era of a civilization. And so I look forward, I look forward to the symbol center of design becoming the epitome of one of the most amazing things that the University of Illinois did in its 21st century history, and that is change the residential education experience for a student in a way that we cannot imagine today. So thank you very much for being part of this very special event. I am thrilled to be part of this community. Congratulations to the entire community for this amazing accomplishment, the Siebel Center for Design. Now you say, who is going to be the person that assumes the responsibility to take all this excitement of students and faculty and staff and the entire community and turn it into action? We are very lucky. When it comes to passion, we always somehow find ourselves going back to our own. So it is, I believe, not a coincidence. It is a blessing that uh, we are fortunate to have as our inaugural director for the Simple Center for Design, an alumna of ours, Rachel Switsky. <laughs> Rachel was here on this campus pursuing her degrees in industrial design, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and then she went on and she did amazing things with her career a multifaceted career that was driven by only one goal, bring people together to do much more together than we could do individually. And she was at ID of busy, so busy, and yet when she heard about this opportunity in her alma mater to start something totally new with such a transformative promise, Rachel says, well, I have to be part of it. Rachel. We are fortunate to have you back on our campus as our inaugural director of the Civil Center for Design. Please help me welcome Rachel back home. So I'm thrilled to be here with you today back at my alma mater. Uh, and as the inaugural director of the Siebel Center for Design. I'm absolutely thrilled. Um, I've spent the last 10 years in Silicon Valley working with Fortune 100 companies, and I've clearly learned that the companies have a real need for employees who understand and embrace the tenets of design thinking. With this gift, Tom Siebel has set, has set us up on a path that will, further, that will further infuse the undergraduate education we offer with these very principles. Our students will enter the workforce ready to solve complex problems creatively and with end users in mind. Our goal is to center all the experiential and academic work that takes place here around the practice of design thinking. And we're going to arm our students with not only these skills, but also with collaboration and context so that they can apply their interdisciplinary perspectives to real world challenges. This building is going to be a physical manifestation of a movement, of putting the human experience at the center of all we do, of thinking and communicating in new ways. It honors all the exploration, the experiments, the evolution our faculty and students engage in every day. And it honors all the boundaries that we push in, this, in the name of making this world a better place. It's my intent that this building serves as a hub that sparks creative thought, collaboration, and recognition that design, no matter if you're designing a, a product or a space or a service, it's ultimately about, about creating the best experience for the people. 
and I look forward to working with units all across campus in their spaces too in order to bring design thinking to their courses and programs as well. And I could not be more excited, <laughs> this is where I break down and cry, <laughs> I could not be more excited that I get to return to my alma mater. <laughs> to do this very important work because Illinois has always been a place with no boundaries. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's give her another round of applause. Rachel, I can tell you, we could not be more pleased that the door seems to swing both ways from here to Silicon Valley, and you're a good example that it can swing back the other way as well. So welcome back home. Well, we've mentioned his name quite appropriately a lot here today, and I think a number of us have had a chance to provide our perspective on the impact of Tom Siebel's newest investment in this great university. But I know full well that we have a standing room only crowd here today because you want to hear firsthand Tom's vision for the Siebel Center for Design and to hear why he chose this university for his gift. But before I turn the podium over to Tom, I'd like to present him with a very special gift to mark today's occasion. Yes, we're breaking ground today, but I think we all realize that uh, once the ground is broken and the construction will move rather quickly, but it's still going to be just a little while before there's a, a building on this site. So our friends and colleagues in the College of Engineering worked very closely with the architectural team at uh, BCJ to create a very special 3D print model of the Siebel Center for Design that, Tom, we'd like for you to take home with you today to remind you of what your great vision is creating at this great university. So please join me in welcoming, welcoming Tom as I present him his very special gift. Deputy Governor, President, Chancellor, Provost, distinguished guests, I stand before you humbled. Good afternoon. Today is April 24th, 2018. It's a beautiful day. And I ask that we take a moment to take pause. Just a moment to pause to stop and see, to stop and listen, to, top, just to stop and notice where we are and what is happening. Look around, right here, right now. We're in the midst of a miracle, the miracle of life, the miracle of freedom, the miracle of democracy, the miracle of friendship, the miracle of family, the miracle of knowledge, the miracle of the human mind, and the miracle of this great university. This is a place where miracles happen. In the 35 years since I've left this university, I've learned that miracles do in fact happen, but you need to plan for them very carefully. It's been my great honor and my great privilege to be an active member of this community throughout my adult life and to make some small contributions 
at the margin of this miraculous institution of advanced learning and higher education. It's my hope that this design center will further that cause. It's my hope that for generations to come, the Illinois Design Center will serve as a happy place where some of the brightest young minds on the planet will gather daily to collaborate, to ideate, to create, to imagine the impossible, to advance the process of design thinking, to invent and then reinvent the future, and to make miracles happen. It was our objective when we set out to, to do this, to build a facility on the campus of the University of Illinois, a multidisciplinary design facility, okay, that was you know, second to none on the planet. Okay? I think we are succeeding at that objective. In so doing, uh, we reached out for the assistance and support of one of the most renowned and famous architects on the planet in, in the person of my close friend, Peter Bolin. Okay, Peter Bolin, if you, you look him up on the internet, you will realize he is, he is the genuine article. Okay, and he designs places where people want to be. So he designs, for example, the Apple stores the Apple Cube in New York City. He designs places where people want to congregate, where they want to interact, where they want to create, where they want to imagine the future, okay, and, and just where people want to be together, and that was the objective here. And so, Peter, we thank you for your substantial contribution to this effort. We are, you know, it's our, our, our great privilege to have you involved. I'm a student of the University of Illinois at Urbana. I am a graduate of the University of Illinois at Urbana. I am an ambassador for the University of Illinois at Urbana. And I am a product of the University of Illinois at Urbana. And it's, can't imagine how gratifying it is to see uh, many old friends and acquaintances here. But I want to acknowledge one person who made an, an enormous impact on my career who was generous enough to come out today. And this is Professor Richard Engelbrecht Wiggins. Richard, just stand up for one second so you could people will acknowledge you. Richard was my professor almost four decades ago who introduced me to computing. He was patient with my questions. His office hours were always open. He was tolerant of my incompetence. Richard, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the courtesy that you extended us uh, for coming out today. I can tell you our, 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 our vision for this design center and our vision for this design thinking process at the University of Illinois at Urbana is that the University of Illinois at Urbana set the bar at global scale. Okay, this needs to be the high bar, okay, but by which and to which all other institutions, MIT, Stanford, Yale, Berkeley, okay, measure, okay, try to measure up to, okay? <laughs> that's the objective, that's the mission, that's the dream, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your courtesy.
Tom, thank you so much again for your generosity to this university and for your newest investment uh, in our students at this great university. And I know you just did it once a few moments ago, but I ask you, please join me again in another round of applause and appreciation for this groundbreaking gift and this groundbreaking ceremony for the Siebel Center for Design here at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Thank you so much. And now, uh, ask my colleagues to uh, join me uh, at the shovels.